We're still trying to unwrap this puzzle of uh, what, what happened to Fang relative to the rest of tech in the last few weeks. Okay, yeah, so I believe that the market is still struggling to try and get comfortable with margins and investment. And if you look at the Fang stocks, you know, starting with Netflix, who didn't raise their margin guidance, and, and on to Amazon, who talked about 19 investments, and certainly Alphabet seeing margin compression. Um, I, I think that you and, and Facebook struggled with this going back to last year. You just have this question of what's more important to the market. Is it revenue growth, which Google accelerated, or, is it, or it, are these FANG stocks going to get a little bit of a pass given their dominance, given um, their track record to invest a little bit more uh, for revenue growth in future years? I think that's a theme that I hear a lot from tech investors right now on the FANG stocks. Well Mike, Mike I, don't, I don't feel too bad about a, a lot of technology stocks outside of that. I mean, I look at Twilio, Coupa, Workday, Atlassian, Splunk, ServiceNow, all up around 25% or better over six months. So is there another story that's happening here that perhaps you're feeling uh, on the ground in Silicon Valley as well? Well, look, I think that generally, uh, as the market expands and the economy continues to be strong, People spend on technology because technology gives companies a competitive advantage, you know, whether it's a Twilio or an Elastic. These are all companies that by using their product, companies create growth, create earnings. And so the fact that more technology is being used is not surprising. I think the distance between the large tech stocks, the FANGs, and uh, the more of the mid-cap and smaller tech companies has to do with the fact that those who have more, the big ones have more global exposure, and there are certainly some global concerns that are out there right now. But fundamentally, tech is riding a very strong wave. And whether you look at the public sector or even the private companies that we tend to invest in, across the board, you're seeing continuing very, very strong momentum in the underlying fundamentals. And as a result of that, I think we're going to see continued growth for the time being, particularly if the U.S. economy continues to perform. So, Mike, just to dig into that a little bit more, given the fact that we do have quite a number of large uh, tech unicorns, so to speak, expected to go public this year. I mean, the criticism there has been that many of those companies could come to market. They're already mature. Maybe their best growth is behind them. You think what? It's pretty interesting. I would say there's a little bit of a dichotomy between some of these consumer companies that are coming public this year and some of the companies that do more of the enterprise software sector. The consumer ones have tended to wait a little bit longer to come to market and as a result are a little more mature and their growth has slowed a bit. The enterprise ones tend to be going public a little bit earlier because being public is helpful in selling their products to other corporations. I tend to think you're going to see a little bit of a dichotomy where the consumer companies will probably come out, meet some level of expectation, find the plateau level of where the stocks are going to be, whereas I think the enterprise companies might continue to grow a little bit because they're smaller and inherently a little more skewed on the growth side. But look, there's a lot of expectation. Some of these companies are truly iconic, whether you're talking about an Uber, and Airbnb. Uh, these are businesses that become, you know, their, their names have become essentially the category. And I think that, generally speaking, they're going to be well received when they come to market. Hey, Anthony, obviously it's a big week uh, regarding U.S. and China trade as these mid-level talks continue. My question for Kramer earlier this morning was if you got news that she was going to come to Mar-a-Lago in March ostensibly to sign something, uh, what would be the first bid you make? Uh, do you have a list, a shopping list ready to go if that happens? Well, yeah, that's a good question. I think it's been a little bit of an overhang. By and large, the social media and advertising supported names don't operate in China. Um, Amazon has some exposure to China, so I think any relief there, uh, maybe it's an opportunity to own Amazon. And I know there are a whole host of other headlines and, and things to think about in terms of, uh, of that one. But basically, I think Facebook, Google, Amazon, I think the FANG names, and listening to what Mike is talking about, I think they're... Uh, reasonably valued. They're market leaders. They have generally revenue that is less cyclical than you think. I think some of those macro fears have probably proven to be a little bit overblown. And if they've got competitive moats and they're reasonably valued, they're actually a lot more reasonably valued than some of the, the late stage unicorns, I think, that were mentioned earlier. Um, so I think strength and momentum in the fundamentals in the private markets bodes well for the FANG names in, in, in some way. I know it's a, a dotted line and not direct. But uh, anyway, re regardless of kind of the China talks, I think there have been headline overhangs, whether it be regulatory or macro fears or China, that have been pressuring FANG and the tech market broadly. And I think that's created perhaps an opportunity here.
Anthony, Paul Krugman comes out, the economist says it looks like the bubble may be deflating when it comes to tech growth. Is he wrong? Is there even, is there, is there not a bubble when it comes to tech? I don't think there's a bubble for the large publicly traded tech companies. And the reason I say that is that they're pretty reasonably valued on earnings and free cash flow. Um, in a lot of cases, if I look at Google, $140 billion company, they're actually reaccelerating revenue growth. So I, I just don't feel, when I, I look at these stocks and I go back to prior cycles, like if you want to say bubble, I, I think of 0001. I just don't feel like these stocks are very overvalued. I, I just don't feel like there's a lot of uh, speculative excess in these stocks. Um, we can go to, to Smidcap land and see some very high multiples, that's for sure. But when you look at the large cap dominant uh, free cash flow generating tech stocks, I actually think the, the market has them pretty fairly valid. I don't see a bubble here.